Father, we just thank you for the day that you provided for us. We thank you that you have made a way when there seems to be no way. Lord, help us just as your people to see you for who you are, to trust you for who you are, to follow you all the days of our life. We love you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we can pray. Amen. Amen. Are you excited this morning? It's cool to know that we have a God who makes a way when there is no way. And I want to ask you, does your life ever get messy? Nobody? 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 I think sometimes my life is like the junk drawer that we have in our house. Uh, Anybody got a junk drawer? Okay, there you go. Now I know you're with What do we put in that junk drawer? Things that we don't know what to do with, do we? Some of us might have two or three. You might even have a junk closet. We do that. We put things in that we don't know what to do with. In our life, it's the same way. We have things going on and we don't know exactly what we want to do with them, so we just put them away. How many times do we come to church and somebody asks us, how are you doing? And what do we say? Fine. I'm fine. When inside we want to say, no, let me tell you, my work is stressing me out. My kids have eaten fish sticks all week. I can't do what I want to do. My health is bad. I can't do the things that I used to be able to do. We fall in the van all the way to church, but I'm fine. Why do we do that? Why don't we just take the time to to clean the things out in our life and look and say, I have a God who has made a way when I didn't see a way. I have a God that when I was in the lowest point of my life, he made a way. I have a God that in the scriptures, when Adam and Eve sinned, that he covered them, he hugged them, and he loved them. That when Moses couldn't see the promised land, the scriptures tell us that God took him up and held him like a baby so he could see over the Jordan. That when John the Baptist was going to die because of a political figure, that God held him. That as Stephen was being stoned, it said that the heavens opened, and there God was. And there was a man named Paul who looked at that God changed his life and in turn became the greatest missionary ever. Folks, we realize that God shows up in the middle of our journey. God is there when we're broken. We think that so many times that God loves us so much more when we're doing right and we're reading our Bible and we're praying and we've got it all together. And then if we're in the broken parts of our life, we must be doing something wrong. But God meets us there in the broken. He meets us there where we are. And this morning, if you're in that place, in a place where you say, you know, I just don't know what to do with the mess my life has become. I want to tell you that God has made a way where there is no way and his name is Jesus. Come on. And Jesus came to this earth and he showed us how to live a sinless life. He came to this earth and said, I want to have not only life in heaven for you, but life more abundant while you're on this earth. Because man's life is short and it's full of trouble. And when we accept Jesus, he's not going to say, hey, everything is smooth. But he says, I'm going to be with you. In the hardest part of my life, I looked at God and I said, God, I don't care what happens. I'm going to follow you forever. And that was many years ago. And I'd love to tell you from that day forward, it's been sunshine and roses. But it hadn't. I look back on my life and I see failures. And I see highs. And I see lows. And I see the good times. And I see the bad times. But God was always there with us. And that's made a way through the sinless blood of Jesus. Because when he went to that cross, he died for us in mine. The scriptures say before you were even in the womb, I knew you. He knew what our failures were going to be. He knew. He calculated in all of our stupidity. He calculated in all the good times. And he said, I still want you. I want you to be a part of what I want to do. I want you to see how heaven can be. I want to give you a life that's more abundant. He gave us that. And on that cross, when he died, he went into that grave and he defeated the grave and he defeated the hell. On the third day, he arose in church. That gives us hope. It right. gives us hope that we have a Savior that loves us and someone we can trust. And you might be in this room today and you might have been a Christian your entire life. You might have walked in for the first time, had no idea what I'm talking about. Somebody in church might have told you one time that you can't be a part because you got tattoos, pink hair, because you asked too many questions, you hadn't been baptized, you hadn't done this, you're not from the Holy Bloodline, all of that stuff. Jesus said, come. I want That's you right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Woo! this Jesus. Put all the other things aside. Put all the junk aside and let him help you make your way where there seems to be no way. 
if everybody would just bow your heads for a moment so that we can have a little privacy so it can just be us and God. I just want to ask you this morning, do you know Jesus? Do you know who he is? And would you give him a chance to be the Lord of your life? 